Hey out there, this is Friday, July 15th, 2016 here in Northern California. It's uh, about 11.32 in the morning. Got up kind of late today, which is highly irregular for me. I actually slept a little past nine. But um, anyhow, maybe I'm trying to avoid facing reality, you know, re quote reality, because you know, what happened in Nice just yesterday uh, is um, beyond disturbing. Um, I think the big lesson here is that uh, guns aren't the only thing that can kill people in mass. But I guess we already knew that, but always the focus is on the, you know, the right to defense, the, the you know, Second Amendment, firearms, guns, and uh, as being the only uh, weapon uh, that can be used and we all know that's far 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 from the truth but just to revisit what happened in France for a second um, you know I uh, when I was 16 years old I lived in Santa Cruz California I used to cruise around I had what was kind of a hot rod car a 65 Mercury Comet I had worked all summer at uh, this uh, big industrial linen supply, Mission Linen, it was called, when I was 15. I worked there all summer and saved my money and uh, got this car off a lot. Big E Motors, I remember to this day. This is going back to 1974, remember. And uh, it was on May Street, and that's where the Department of Motor Vehicles was located. Uh, right off Ocean Street, which is the uh, the end of Highway 17. Anyhow, this uh, this car I fell in love with was a Canary Yellow, uh, original paint job, 19, uh, 1965 Mercury Comet. And uh, it was a coupe. It uh, was stock with four on the floor and uh, dual exhaust and a four-barrel Holley carburetor, 289 V8 engine. And uh, I absolutely had to have it. It was selling for $600, and um, my mom kicked in another $100, and I was able to buy this car. But that's just a side point. And uh, anyhow, I was cruising that car with Tim Houghton, my friend from school. We used to surf together and uh, hot rod together. And uh, anyhow, I remember we went together once to San Jose to the flea market and got some chrome wheels for, for our cars. He had some old Ford Galaxy he used to love to cruise around too. But um, anyhow, I was parked, at, I was stopped. We were stopped at a stop sign and I had my tape player, cassette player inside my glove box and Tim was changing a tape. And so I was paying attention to what was in front of me and there was a car coming from my left and a man was crossing the street in a crosswalk and um, these people uh, hit the man and uh, and he flew forward uh, probably at least 50 feet maybe 60 70 feet and he landed in a crumpled up bloody uh, pile bleeding there in the road and uh, it all happened so fast uh, you know Tim was still at his head in the glove box and he didn't see it but I saw everything, and um, you know the moment of impact, the whole the whole thing, and uh, and I was traumatized. I'll tell you. But uh, I had the presence of mind to to go and run. I guess I had a dime in my pocket, and I ran to the closest payphone. They were ubiquitous back then in 1974. But uh, I uh, put my dime in the phone, and you know I didn't know. I guess that it was free to make a 911 emergency call, but I put the dime in anyhow. And uh, made the call, and uh, you know the cops came, and you know the party that had hit the man had pulled over. It wasn't a hit and run. Uh, the man smashed the windshield because he bounced off the front of the car, hit the windshield, and then he was propelled forward from there. So he smashed the windshield. And this young couple, I guess, you know, it looked like uh, were in abs absolute shock and horror at what had happened. You can see their window. I, I, there's one thing I noticed when they went by. The window looked like it was fogged up. 
that area gets a lot of moisture condensation from the ocean and everything but so anyhow I remember reading in the newspaper the next day that no citation was issued and the man was uh, pronounced dead on arrival at the hospital I was the only one really unbiased there to give a uh, you know my witness testimony to the uh, police but th that's what happened and um, you know these are the last people in the world that are ever going to run somebody over accidentally again but uh, you know this is uh, in reference to what I know about uh, you, you know what the visuals are uh, when it comes to um, you know traffic fatalities especially that of pedestrians and it's horrible absolutely horrific because limbs are just twisted and bent in ways that you you, 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 you never thought you'd ever you know be able to imagine except in maybe Dante's Inferno you know the ninth circle of nine circles of hell but anyhow it's just so horrible and for the first responders all the paramedics all the law enforcement all the bystanders they're all going to be traumatized forever now the last count I heard was 84 people killed and 202 wounded can you imagine I mean how fast did this man have to be going and how vulnerable are these people can law enforcement all over the world learn from this incident and say this is never going to happen again we're not going to allow these kind of marches where people are, are so absolutely sitting ducks you know just something like this happening I mean can't there be barriers placed up I mean you know what a few extra dollars few extra francs few extra euros you know to to have put something up and, and say look we we're not getting fooled again we already went through the Paris massacre we know what these people are like and my head reels because I'm learning more and more Alex Jones had Paul Joseph Watson on the show and you know he's been talking about the fact that you know this is more prevalent than we realize that actually in Islam apparently that this is some kind of a, a good thing you know to some sex I, I I cannot believe it's all of them you know my, my my head reels at the prospect that this is more than you know half a percent or one percent but you know what the deal is is that there's all this sympathy for bombers believe it or not in France I mean the figures are astounding he's talking about 30 percent of the people there um, uh, support suicide bombing and I have to say at this point that this whole thing with ISIS and ISIL, this threat, this you know, Al-Qaeda threat all around the world was invented, it was created. What I believe these email scandals, this thing with Hillary and everything, it, it involves the highest offices of the land. It involves trying to use these terrorist people to overthrow Assad and to go in in place of uh, Qaddafi there in, in Libya and wherever they could install these people because the New World Order and these terrorists are two peas in a pod. They're one and the same. You understand? These are the people that invented the situation. This is why Putin, uh, looking absolutely and utterly enraged, is telling the world, he says, do you know what you've done? You know, and he's referencing this New World Order cabal and all these people that are you know working with these people okay to overthrow civilization and to centralize everything surrounding about around them for in perpetuity okay this is what it's all about but he says you know do you understand what you've done and and people now are starting to understand what Putin is talking about what guys like Donald Trump are talking about you know you ever wonder why the establishment hates Donald Trump so much because he's speaking truth he's educating people I mean, Paul Joseph Watson's educating me. You know, maybe the figures are higher. I don't know. I, I dread to think that there's, you know, these guys are everywhere. And I got to, oh, my God, you know, when am I going to be in danger of getting hit by a jihadist, you know, suicidal freak, you know, demon-possessed nutcase, okay? Because that's all they are. They're just, the new world order operates differently. They've got to be a little more diplomatic and subtle and nuanced and cunning and deceptive when, when they operate these people are just in your face yeah we're we're out of our minds we're willing to kill ourselves okay but the new world order is the same way that's what spoiled little rotten brats these are okay anti-democratic anti-truth anti-reality anti-anything good okay these are a miserable bunch of freaks okay that's all they are I and mean, you know god you know have mercy on their souls but they're all going to the same place you know a message to the new world order cabal you're going to the same place with those terrorists so you know have fun with that okay 
But, you know, one last word about Donald Trump. Uh, you know, he really does need to confront the facts I talk about immigration. You know, he's got to make sure that the people understand he's not going to engage in any mass uh, deportation, okay, because there's countless business interests, countless just landlords alone that, you know, and here in California, it's against the law. You, if they're illegal, that doesn't matter in iota. If you don't, you know, you might end up in jail if you don't rent your place because somebody's illegal. That's the reality here in California, and I'm assuming it's pretty much the same by proxy across the land since California leads the way, right, in this communist takeover. And it's going to happen through things like your property tax. Okay, understand California has some of the highest property tax in the country. Is that good forever? I mean, people that fear communism need have nothing more to fear. It's already here. Understand the government owns your property in perpetuity. How can that be? That's like an evil. That's like Satan, you know, taking over the world forever. You know, you got to pay this. It's never paid off. You never own any real estate. Okay, the whole earth belongs to Satan and his minions. Okay. So, you know, whatever job you do within the government, you better wake up, okay? And it, when the time comes, and when you have to jump ship and decide, you'd better do it because we're all being refined by the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's an unquenchable fire. It's going to sweep through the land. And at the end of the day, it's like the harvest. God's going to know very clearly, you know, the crop that you're trying to grow, the cultivar, from the weeds, okay? And he knows what they're going to pile to be burned up. And that's where, that's why that hell place, it gets really hot and miserable down there. When you evildoers have nobody else to bully around, to intimidate, to terrorize, okay? That's where you're all going. You know, the ISIS does it with, with violence, they intimidate, but the New World Order cabal uses money. But it's all, you know, to the same purpose, to the same end. They're working. They want everything centralized. They want to be like the kings, the satanic kings and queens of the earth. And, you know, thank God for Donald Trump standing up and, and talking about these issues, uh, educating people, like I said, even myself. And, um, you know, we can't tolerate this. We can't tolerate this. What the hell are we talking about here? Who, you know, how many people have, uh, you know, people they care about more than themselves in their lives? I do. And I sure as hell don't, you know, like the idea of one iota of something bad happening to, to people I know and love. Okay, as who would? You'd have to be out of your mind. But, uh, you know, Donald Trump standing up, okay, here's a guy that's a multi-billionaire. I could care less, okay? I've, I've got no more regard for Donald Trump than, you know, the bum rolling around in his vomit in the gutter, really. I mean, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to emulate, imitate what I believe about God through Jesus Christ, okay? And he was not, he's not a respecter of men. That's written in your Bible. And our righteousness is filthy rags to the Lord. So, you know, all glory to God. So if Donald Trump, you know, did something great and achieved and accomplished something wonderful for humanity, he's a philanthropist. And, you know, the people that work for him like him. He's generous. His friends like him. He's a nice, down-to-earth kind of common-sense guy. Well, fine. I mean, maybe he's one of these few that can go to heaven even though he's rich because he's working to do things for the people at large. You see, if we can get America out of this festering cesspool of corruption that we're in, and we continue to get more and more steeped in, okay, uh, and it's happening again through the money, this is it. it th this whole thing with terrorism, it's just a diversion from, don't look at the New World Order cabal and the banking interest, the, the money printing interest primarily because these are the ones that have the copyright these are the kingpins so all these corrupt politicians are all those are who they're cleaving to so who's that really at the top I don't know who's behind who owns the Federal Reserve Bank for example who owns the copyright to the money that's who's at the very top of the pyramid this dog pile of doom that they've got set up where they just want to get rid of the vast majority of people and they're very open and candid about that they, they have no compunction about admitting that you know, they believe humanity is a virus, you know, like Prince Philip is it, and, you know, and that they would like to, you know, he wants to come back, be reincarnated as a deadly virus and kill people. So that's who they are. And you see how they're very much like ISIS and Al-Qaeda and these terrorists <laughs> I just want to kill people.